So is the battle for power in Maharashtra in its final leg right now? Let's take you through the plan of action, the battle plan for each side right now, beginning with the Uddhav Sena, who we've referred to here as the defenders. They're going to try and ensure that they stop further defections. Right now, it's one MLA after another ditching him, ditching Uddhav. Uh, he's also going to try hard to bring back the rebels. So far, he's been completely unsuccessful in that effort. Now, what also is becoming the big main focus right now is to stop any sort of recognition of Shinde Sena. And that's why they've taken that step of disqualification as well. Of course, legally also, he's going to be seeking some relief to challenge these defections in court. But there'll be questions on how he'll do that, especially if Shinde has 37+. plus. He's also going to ensure that MPs, members of parliament, also don't follow suit and dump Sena though there have been news breaks coming in of several MPs now choosing to back Eknath Shinde. What about the ally? What about Sharad Pawar? What is his particular strategy right now? Number one will be to keep the NCP flock together. Not really a problem considering the rebellion is fueled within the Shiv Sena over the NCP Congress alliance. Now also another uh, uh, a factor that they have to consider is to prepare for defeat, to prepare for a political crisis, which Sharad Pawar has also said that this is going to be a crisis. We've seen many like this. We will deal with it. He's also said very clearly that there's no question of leaving Udhav in the lurch, that they're all united in this fight, and he wants to put forth that projection, that image, that they're still very much an alliance and they're together. What about the Shinde Sena? Eknath Shinde is a man of the moment who spewed and ensured this entire rebellion. He's going to be luring more MLAs and MPs from Uddhav Sena. Already there are some reports that more will be joining him in Guwahati today. Now besides that, taking things forward, now that he has that magic number of 37, he's going to be staking claim as the main opposition party as well. What we're hearing is that Shinde will be joining forces with the BJP to form the government. The numbers will be comfortable. Of course, it's easier said than done because there's a long procedure that start off and that really will be the acid test, the litmus test for Eknath Shinde. All right, let's tell you about the rival force here. Fadnav is led BJP. Well, what they'll want to do is to ensure that Shinde Sena remains together, that there isn't a single MLA who changes heart or changes mind and turns away. So they will do whatever they can to ensure there's no U-turn in the strategy to protect Shinde Sena from Udha. What we're hearing is that they're going to be providing all legal support also needed to Eknath Shinde because this is no doubt going to turn into a long-drawn legal battle as well. Ensure the support of all rebels. The next step as far as this entire rebellion is concerned, as far as the BJP uh, is concerned, is to ensure that these rebels back them 100%. And of course, finally, the mission, the objective of this entire rebel uh, is to bring down the Udhav Aghadi government. So that's what the BJP wants from this. Of course, at this point, who are the powerless spectators in this entire Maharashtra uh, saga? It's the Congress. They have zero leverage in the unfolding game. They're only happy over the fact that they've not faced a rebellion. But they have absolutely no way that they can actually help their own ally. They have no choice but to wait and watch right now and to ensure that they don't add a bigger headache for Uddhav Thakri or for Sharad Pawar. They keep their flock together. Kamal Nath troubleshooter has been sent there for the Congress, by the Congress High Command really, to ensure that they remain together. And that's pretty much all that they can do right now. Let's take this back across to our reporters on the ground. Paulami Saha is joining us live from Guwahati. We've got Moshmi Singh reporting live from Mumbai. Paulami, coming across to you right now on what Eknath Shinde is going to do next. He's got that number of 37, the magic number of 37. But the question about, you know, uh, how things will work out right now, it's going to be a long-drawn legal battle. He's going to have to prove his numbers as well. So it looks like the next step will be to take his MLAs back to Mumbai. And that will be the real test of allegiance, of support. Oh, absolutely. While, of course, Akshata, he goes ahead and he tries to, of course, uh, prove uh, his strength in numbers uh, before the governor, uh, before uh, the deputy speaker, uh, if he has to. Uh, the fact is that there is a long-drawn legal battle as well uh, that he's going to face because already the Shiv Sena has swooped down and has basically uh, sent in a disqualification notice against 12 rebel MLAs, including Eknath Shinde, to the deputy speaker, to the governor, as well as to the legislative uh, secretary. Uh, their argument, of course, is that 
that these uh, party MLAs did not attend uh, the party meeting which was called and there was a clear whip uh, for the same. Eknath Shinde of course uh, rep uh, replied to that in a Twitter thread yesterday and he categorically stated uh, that you know I know the law, I know how it works and I know the ten schedule of uh, the constitution very well. It doesn't apply uh, to uh, you know meetings that happen outside the house. It applies to assembly proceedings and uh, uh, how the MLAs uh, behave vis-a-vis uh, -vis the whip that is issued for assembly proceedings. But um, you know there might be a catch in that Rakshita because there is a precedent where for instance a very recent one where Sharad Yadav, member of parliament uh, was in fact disqualified from the JDU after the JDU moved a disqualification uh, uh, proceed, uh, uh, proceeding against him, a notice against him in the Rajya Sabha uh, saying that he had attended an opposition rally and hence he should be disqualified. He no longer in fact belongs uh, to the JDU and he was indeed disqualified. So an opposition rally happening outside uh, the Rajya Sabha precincts uh, and that is why Sharad Yadav was disqualified. So it is going to be a very nuanced uh, legal uh, battle that we are going to witness over here uh, because uh, Earlier we saw that, uh, you know, the Eknash Shinde sent in uh, that uh, resolution uh, to the Deputy Speaker with only 34 signatures and that may have been in a little bit of a haste uh, because uh, it didn't have two-third numbers on it and that's exactly why you saw them send out the exact same copy of the resolution announcing Eknash Shinde as the leader of the Legislature Party still of the Shiv Sena despite Shiv Sena having removed him and replaced him with Ajay Chaudhary and the Chief Whip as uh, Bharat Gogavle with 37 signatures which is the figure it should have had in the first place. The resolution, two-thirds, if you are moving in that direction and calling yourself leader of the legislature party, then you need to have two-thirds. But you sent in a resolution first with 34 and then you corrected one and sent in one with 37. Meanwhile, Shiv Sena had already moved in before you, before you sent in that resolution and asked for disqualification of 12 rebel MLAs. So it's a very nuanced sort of a legal battle uh, Akshita that's going to play out uh, uh, we're certain in courtrooms as well as we speak and of course in the offices of the Election Commission, uh, yep. the Legislative Assembly and the Governor House as well. And that's why I've said that this is going to be a long drawn process, no doubt a fight that will be over the party symbol as